Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. We have just stepped out of two awesome days, Rosh Hashanah, uh, in which we celebrated the coronation of our king, our, our king, our father, our Ravinu Malkeinu. It was a three-day Yom Tov of awesomeness. And then we came into Yom Kippur, which was even more awesome. It's 20, almost 26 hours of not eating and feeling like angels and doing Teshuvah and connecting to God and asking Him for everything we need and acknowledging that everything comes from Him. And we step out of these two days and we come to party. That is Sukkot. Sukkot is a huge party. Rosh Hashanah is compared by our sages to the engagement party of a, of a bride and a groom. It's our engagement party with Hashem. And we are acknowledging that He's our King. We are, we're accepting Him. Then comes Yom Kippur and it's compared to the wedding between God and the Jewish people. And then Sukkot, it's seven days that we're dwelling in a hut, in a sukkah. And it's compared to the Sheva Berahot that are celebrated after a couple gets married. For seven days, eh, people invite them and they usually have, they have to have a minimum of 10 men in that dinner. And so they can then give them the blessings of the Sheva Berahot to the couple and they can start their life in joy. And uh, this is Sukkot. Really, and um, the sukkah resembles, we are remembering the huts in which the Jewish people used to dwell in the, in the desert for 40 years. They used to dwell in huts. And the protection that the Jewish people had in the desert for 40 years really came from God. The, the clouds of glory would protect them from any external things that could harm them. And then they had the manna that used to fall from the heaven every day. They had exactly what they needed to eat. So they never lacked food. And then they had Miriam's well that used to travel with them. And they, every time they were thirsty, they had water in the desert wherever they were. It was a rock that they had with them. And it, it, brought, it was a spring. So from here we remember the, the miracles that God made for the Jewish people in the desert for 40 years. And for seven days, we build our sukkahs in our homes. If people can't build them in their homes, they go to a hotel and they have uh, sukkah programs or, or in their synagogues, they have sukkahs. There are sukkahs everywhere. And uh, we eat there uh, our meals and we just enjoy. That's, that's sukkot. It's a time of joy, of, of rejoicing. It's a time of, uh, of rejoicing. So we invite friends, we invite our neighbors, we invite someone we don't know that needs a meal. It's a time of unity, of tremendous unity between the Jewish people and the, and the world. And uh, we come to realize something very important and really this is the secret to happiness. The, 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 the vitamin for happiness is given to us on Sukkot. And this vitamin is that life is not forever. It, we are here in this world for a certain amount of time. Everybody that is in this world is gonna die one day. We're not, all, we're not staying here. This is the journey. This is the, 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 not the destination. This is the journey. And sadness comes a lot because think, people think that whatever they're going through is forever. And when you realize that life is not forever, it's just a moment in time, in which God is giving you a, an opportunity to come to this world to, to do mitzvot and do Torah and to your soul it has to go through such a long uh, journey to get here. It's not an easy journey, but once you're here and you realize that you're here for a purpose and it is to gain merits, to, to, to acquire merits so you can earn the world to come, then you're not going to waste your life. You're going to realize how precious your life is. It's not something that you throw away. It's something that every day you really are grateful that you're breathing and you're in this world, no matter what the situation is. Because as hard as it can be, it's a tremendous opportunity for growth and for you to be able to accomplish what you have to accomplish in order to really get to where you have to go. This is the preamble. It's like when you go to a wedding and before you enter the ballroom where you're going to be served this delicious food, you're outside 
in a nice place they're serving you some drinks and they're serving you some hors d'oeuvres but this is not the, the the destination so this is the the core idea of Sukkot is that life is not forever that we're here for a certain amount of time each one of us is allotted an amount of time some people live a hundred years some people don't live so much but whatever the amount of time we have here is precious and we have to use it to the fullest and uh, the sukkah as beautiful as you can make it really is not a home if, if it's gonna rain you're gonna get wet if it's gonna snow you're gonna get cold if, it, if it's windy you're you're gonna be feeling that it's gonna it's moving if, if there's a storm it's gonna get destroyed it's it's not a, a sturdy structure and the whole idea of this is that our security really doesn't come from our home or the check the money we have in the bank or the job you have or the beauty you have your security comes from Hashem he's the one that takes care of you nobody else he's the one that really is looking after you and is taking care of you and making sure that you have everything you need so this idea of temporality and that our protection comes from Hashem really is the core um, the core strength to our joy it's like when you go to Pilates and you're working on your core and your core is what sustains your whole body that point that is the core of joy and when people don't think this way suddenly they can become very sad because yeah if, 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 if life is not what they were expecting then they're not going to appreciate what they have and they're not going to realize that whatever is going in their lives is really what they have to live and this is what is the when you get away from that uncertainty that's when you can be happy because when you're able to find your purpose and your mission in life and the reason why you're in this world then you can really be, start to be happy you can start to enjoy life so there's another um, component in Sukkot that is very important and it's the four species the four kinds that uh, all men should acquire and it's uh, the one of the the four kinds uh, is the citron the trog which is a um, it looks like a lemon it's a yellow fruit it's a beautiful yellow fruit and it this fruit uh, describe these four kinds describe four types of people four types of personality four types of Jew so the citron has smell and taste so what it means is that it's a person that both learns and does mitzvot he learns Torah and he goes out and he does mitzvot in the world then we have the palm which is the lulav which uh, which comes from from the palm tree and this has no taste no sorry it has no smell but it has taste and what this resembles it portrays a person that learns Torah but doesn't do mitzvot yeah he's all day in the yeshiva learning he's a learner he's a scholar but he someone comes ask for uh, for tzedakah he doesn't give tzedakah so he's lacking and then we have the hadassim which is the myrtle and the myrtle is fragrant but tasteless and this is the opposite this is a person that doesn't learn Torah but is full of mitzvot it's the first one to go and volunteer he's the first one to help he's the first one to give tzedakah and then we have the willow which is the aravot which is the person that doesn't have taste and doesn't have smell doesn't have an aroma so this person he doesn't do and he doesn't learn this is like okay and then what do they do with us they we take the the four species together and we shake them together what this means is that the Jews we're, we're all together it doesn't matter if you're learned if you do mitzvahs if you don't do mitzvahs whatever if you're in, interested in keeping Torah not interested in keeping Torah at the end of the day we're, we're shaken together we're one in essence we're one and we're all important if one is lacking if one is missing we're all lacking so the other thing that it's very interesting King Solomon was always mystified about the meaning of the four kinds and he observed that the citron was a tormented fruit because the etrog is a fruit that's always on the tree it never 
you have to take it out. It doesn't fall out of the tree and it survives the four, four seasons in the tree. And what it's telling us here is that the greatest people on earth are the people who have resilience, are the people who are able to get through everything. That they have the summer in their lives, they have the winter in their lives, they have the fall in their lives, they have the spring in their lives, but nevertheless, they're always getting up, they're always cleaning themselves, they're always smiling. It's just like life is seamless to them. It's not, they're not carrying a, a burden on their shoulders. They just go through life and they're light and they're bringing light to the world. And then it comes to the other opposite, which is the willow, the arabot, which doesn't have smell and doesn't have a taste, but this willow grows in the clumps of a river where he's nourished by the water of the, of the riverbed. This is what makes it grow, but he has nothing of itself. But this, what it's telling us is that the roots are embedded in the banks of the ancestral river and nourished by the waters of their heritage. So as far away removed a Jew can be, he has a neshama. He has a Jewish soul and his essence is just the same as the essence of the etrog, of that person that is learned and, 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 and does mitzvot, or a person that is resilient and is always doing things in the world. And when we gathered together in a community, the souls of every person, no matter what, what or where they are, they're always shining and uh, they thrive. When you're in a community and you live in a community, you'll find there's a person for everything. There's a person who helps find the money. There's a person who organizes all the activities in the synagogue. There's a person that's going to give the Torah classes. There's, there's a person that's going to take care of the kids. There's a person that's going to take care of the food. There's always somebody for something. And everybody has an opportunity to shine. So we're meant to be together. We're not meant to be separated. We're meant to be one. But what we have to understand is that each one of us has a different function. So going back to the four species, we also learn from them that they resemble parts of the body. So the citron, the etrog, they represents the heart. If you look at that fruit, it looks like a heart. And the heart is the driving force of a person. When you feel uh, empowered or when you feel with desire and or you feel pleasure you're gonna go and do things it comes from here it comes from the heart so the heart is the driving force the palm tree represents the lulav the spine the spine of a human body is what holds the whole body together like if you look if you have the spine in your back but your 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 arms come out of the spine your hips come out of the spine it's what holds the body together and it's what uh, gives balance to the body. Then we have the Hadassim which resembles the eyes and if you look at the Hadassim, at the, at the myrtle, it's, they're looking upwards. So what, the, what this teaches us is that our eyes should always be looking up. We should never look, be looking down. We should always be looking up to heaven and looking for God and searching for God. And, and, and look at what God gives us. It, it vision is something very important. And then we have the Aravot, the willow, which resembles the lips. If you look at it, it has the shape of the lips. And what this is telling us is that the lips are what create our speech. Like when we move our lips, we're talking, we can talk. And it's an expression of our thoughts and our emotions. So what it's very important is that we feel our thoughts and emotions, we think good so we can feel good, so we can talk good. It's very important what we say. And Hashem gave us lips, He gave us, gave us the, the power of speech to be positive, to always speak beautiful words, to say words of Torah, to reveal Hashem in this world. This is why He gave us a mouth. The mouth is not there to be judgmental towards others, to be doing la shonara against other people, talking bad about other people. This is not the purpose of our mouth. So um, I hope that you have a beautiful Sukkot, that you are able to rejoice, that you get that energy in, in your life for the rest of the year. If you've never experienced a Sukkah, you've never experienced a Sukkot, go to the, the, the synagogue close to your home. There's always people willing to invite or build a Sukkah in your house. There's always a first time. 
You can always build it yourself. It's a huge mitzvah. This is what we do right after Yom Kippur. The first thing we do when we leave the synagogue on Yom Kippur is we go and put something to build the sukkah. Why? Because when we go out of, of Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur is such a holy day and we come out so refreshed and we're all forgiven from all our sins. We're like, we just were born. So we don't go and do a new sin. The first thing we do is we go out and we do a mitzvah. So I encourage you, experience Sukkot. It's the most beautiful holiday. It's a, it's a time of, fo of fun and rejoicing and love and unity. And um, it gives us a lot of strength to be able to, to live joyfully. So I hope you have a Hak Samea and uh, live a little higher. Thank you.